Howdy y'all, got the Bulldog on the channel. What we're working on today is an 04 Lincoln Town Car and I got the power plant dug out of it. I had to do this the other day and it is really aggravating when you set yourself a goal and it just doesn't want to work out. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. It was what I was talking about, shooting a video here the other day and I kept either ranting or running out of data in my phone. But it's out, I'm transferring parts right now and this is what this is about. Why the price for changing out a motor varies wildly from each place you call when you're looking for an estimate or a quote, as some people call it. We don't quote. This is why. We get this motor here from Salvage Yard. Now it came fully dressed with all the parts, but I've stripped it down to this. Reason being, it's completely different. Now this is an 04 Lincoln Town Car. This came out of an 02 Mercury Grand Marquis. It's the same car, it's the same motor, it's the same manufacturer, it is a completely different setup. The only thing you can still see is this water pipe right here bolts down on the underneath side and it has that arch going through there. This one bolts on the top side and the arch goes lower across here than the other one. I hope that doesn't make a difference because this one is incredibly rusted. It is driven into the block. It's gonna be a nightmare if I have to change that. I've got the water pump pulled out of this one. That looks good right there. It looks like it drives in from the back as a press fit. It has me worried. Now the only thing that the salvage yard said was with you'll have to change the intake, just the intake. I don't know what's different about it, but the intake's different. Okay. I popped the intake off and I found out really quick that the exhaust manifolds were different. I've already dropped them off of this engine. The exhaust manifolds are different. The motor mounts are different. On this engine, the EGR pipe came off of this exhaust manifold, went up across here and hooked into the intake right here. And on this one, the EGR pipe comes off the exhaust manifold, goes up across here and hooks up to the intake right here. So it goes to the same place, but off of a different exhaust manifold. These exhaust manifolds are pickled and rusted. So we opted for new manifolds. Uh, they're not really that expensive. I have reused Ford manifolds, I think once in 25 years. Because they just rust out. I mean, I've seen them rust all the way through until you can look in through the fender well and see the exhaust valve looking back at you. I don't know what they do different. I really don't. But anyway, the wiring harnesses are completely different. Uh, I'm cleaning everything up right now. I'm going to set the intake on there and make sure it fits right. This engine did not have a knock sensor in it. I took this out of the other block, cleaned up this spot down here, and bolted it into place. It was, the intake was on it, so I don't know why it did not have a knock sensor. Like I say, there's all this stuff that you end up having to change over. That's why when we do an estimate for a motor, we use long block r, r Long block is that. It is the block with heads installed, usually with timing chains and everything on it. Long block. Long block. 
the valve covers were different. They had uh, the way the PCV valve went down in it was completely different. The oil fill was on a different side. Uh, like I said, the EGR valve went down a different side of the motor. The Lincoln Town car and the Mercury Grand Marquis are identical cars. There's nothing different about them. Why would they be different? I don't know. Two years difference in the year? Whatever. You know? You run into that stuff constantly. They will change something. Why did you change that? Well, we'll have to get back to you on that. I'm sure there's a reason. But is there a reason enough to warrant spending hundreds of thousands of dollars retooling your plant so that you can earn thousands of dollars in different part sales? I think, personally, I think it's because they don't want used parts readily available that are easy to put in so that it drives up the cost of repairs in a general sense. If you, in a general sense, the repairs are more expensive, then you're more apt to buy another vehicle instead of fixing the one you got. But this is what we run into constantly. And this is why we use long block r and instead of engine remove and install. Engine remove and install is just plucking it and putting it back in. Engine R&R &R is plucking it and changing the control systems like a wiring harness or, or something like that. This is long block. Now this one here, in 25 years, this is only the second 4.6 I have ever changed. And I think what happened, you can see, this is the problem with the 5.4. The 4.6 is not nearly as bad, but the 5.4 that has phasers that run right here that adjust the clock, adjust the, the camshaft timing uh, compared to the crankshaft down there. These bearings, as you can see, they are the cylinder head. So when this bearing gets a little bit worn, it pumps the oil through this bearing right here into the camshaft, through the camshaft up to this phaser that rotates, and that's how it works it. Well, when this bearing gets worn down, it loses oil pressure at this bearing and it can't keep the pressure up in your phaser. That's why at an engine idle, when you touch it to go accelerate, you'll get a rattle it's this phaser rattling. Now what happened to this engine, I believe. Do you see these guides? That's right, you don't, because they all exploded and obliterated. There's supposed to be a plastic guide that runs right here. A plastic guide with no aluminum frame. That's smart. See, the tensioner shoe has an aluminum frame and a plastic guide on it. This other side was the same way. Here's part of the guide still there. I believe, here's, I pulled the thing out and dug those chunks of guide out. I believe what happened is he was going down the road and one of these guides, either this one here or this one here, uh, the timing cover has holes ground in it right there. So, I think what happened is this guide broke and the chain started flapping, hitting the timing cover, wore a hole in it, but the pieces of this guide went down and into the oil pan, which is in there, plugged up the oil sump, causing the engine to starve for oil which wiped out the cam. He, he said it started rattling terrible and missing to the point that he shut it off. After he shut it off, this cam locked up. It would not move anymore. The engine was locked up. I had to pull the front cover on this thing because I could work it back and forth and it kept, when the chain come tight, it would lock. I pulled this off 
pulled the chain off and I could rotate the engine a little bit, but it hit valves. So I pulled the cam off and I could get the engine to turn about 320 degrees until it was hitting valves that are bent somewhere. And that got me to where all the torque converter bolts, I could get to them and get them out. That would have been a very bad thing if I couldn't rotate that enough to get those torque converter bolts out. So that would have meant pulling transmission along with it. Luckily, we didn't have to do that. But I just wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about this is why we estimate so high when it comes to doing a motor. Because when you say salvage yard motor, it's the same thing, right? No. I don't think I have ever in 35 years of working on vehicles, I don't think I have ever done a in and out, period. I've been doing this as a professional for 25 years this year. As many as I've done, it's never been just an in and out without changing stuff. Even same year, same car, there's something different. I don't know why. Ask them, call the manufacturer and say, why do you keep changing things around? Oh, we need to improve our product. You're not improving it any, you're just changing it. Anyway, it, it's aggravating. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit your little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.